Hello people, this is Patola from Maker Linux. I'm going today to do a very quick review of the Filabot ABS 3D printing pen. This pen is actually a device for applying a solvent on the printed part surface with rather fine accuracy, so you have complete control of how much liquid gets to the plastic. This one was initially part of a Kickstarter project called Make a Razor, which got funded in 2014. And then a similar product was sold by Filabot, which also expanded the offering by adding larger sizes and different tips for a variety of uses. I have already loaded the compartment in this one with about 2 ounces of acetone, and I will use it to stick the red ABS part in the green ABS part. The way I do that is by pressing the pen on the surface of the green part so that the tip retracts a little and lets a few drops of acetone pass through it onto the surface. The surface plastic gets thick because it is diluted by the acetone. For best adhesion, I will do the same on the other ABS part. The effect of acetone is not only making plastic stick, otherwise this would be just another glue. You see, acetone has a low boiling point and it is volatile. So even at, at ambient temperature, it evaporates quickly. On evaporation, the diluted plastic remains and gets solid again, making the different parts of a continuum of ABS. So even though no heating is applied, the parts are sort of fused together, usually leaving few or no marks. I'm pressing the part so that the gap keeps at minimum size, strengthening the bond. In theory, you could also use the pen to smooth the layer marks on the surface of your parts, but as anyone who uses liquid acetone on ABS can testify, while not apparent at first, the acetone also affects the plastic pigments, and quite often a rather noticeable discoloration of the surface takes place, which although not a problem on hidden surfaces that were fused, is a big no-no on visible parts. Now, the acetone pen is a wonderful and useful invention and its price is quite cheap, about $6 on Amazon, so I would highly he recommend its purchase. But as you might already know, I like to provide an alternative, something which is particularly useful for people abroad who might pay taxes and wait a long time for the original. And to be frank, I do not quite think the retractable tip is the best mechanism for this type of tool, because it requires increased pressure on the surface, which might deform its shape. For that, we will need a few items. First, you need strong scissors or a wire cutter, an old marker, preferably with a square tip. Markers with dried paint work best, this one is already quite faint, as you see. You can see that the tips of the marker and the acetone pen are quite similar, but the marker tip has paint on it, which you'll correct in a minute. And finally, a small syringe which you can buy at drugstores. This one has a 3ml capacity, which is more than enough for small fixes and fusions. We will remove the needle, discard it and its cap with care, as it can hurt people. I will then take the marker apart, removing the back and then pulling its tip which will come off easily. You can see that it's quite long, but we don't need all its length. We need a shorter piece, so you will use the wide cutter. We will snip the slanted part for use and we can save the remaining segment for other devices like this. tip flew off the camera and I got it back. Now we need to fix this on the syringe, which you, we will do with the hot glue. My hot glue gun takes a long time to heat, so in the meanwhile I will take the excess paint off the tip. Any small bottle will do, but in this case I'm using a test tube with isopropyl alcohol to dip in the tip. It's dry now and the heat gun is ready, now we just need something to hold the tip and syringe in place while I glue them. As this is my electronics desk, I have a third hand lying around which is perfect for that. We will just circle the syringe with the glue and try to keep it around the tip but not covering it. A long tool or an ice cream stick might be of use here, so you can mold the glue to hold the tip better. Mm -hmm. 
a few more rounds of hot glue, rolling it around the syringe to uniformly cover its front end. We remove the syringe from the third hand, it's already hardening, and we use the wire cutter to clip off some excess glue. More molding. And a few more of cutting and clipping. Now we get a bit of plumber's tape so that it seals the glue, prevents the applier from leaking and enables the vacuum to hold the acetone inside. Now, the nice thing about the drugstore syringes is that they are made of polypropylene, which is a solvent-resistant plastic. So, it will work just as well with the solvents that work with PLA, like tetrahydrofuran. I do not endorse the use of tetrahydrofuran. It's a dangerous chemical that requires specific security training and apparel to be handled. But for information, other dangerous chemicals that work with PLA are dichloromethane and trichloromethane, also known as chloroform. But for now, with ABS, we will ask assistance from our friendly acetone bottle. For the record, I should be using vinyl gloves, but I'm sloppy reckless. Don't be me. I'm taking the piston off and pouring this acetone into the syringe tub. Notice that it starts dripping. We need to plug the piston back again to have low pressure and prevent the acetone from leaking. We do that and immediately turn the tip of the syringe up, pressing the piston to expel the ex excess air of the syringe. It doesn't drip anymore. Now I can use my newly constructed pen on the ABS part just like I was using the Filabot acetone pen. But the feeling is better because I feel like having a lot more control over the liquid and I do not need to exert pressure on the plastic. Works on the corners and edge too, no problem. So, that's it! See you in the next episode and I hope you find this video and the pen useful and if so, please give us a thumbs up! Thank <laughs> you.